Well, Naki, I would imagine having been, you know, undoubtedly frustrated with the, with the lack of game time, the last couple of matches have um, you know, been much improved and, uh, and back to what you wanted to be doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's been a roller coaster of the season, obviously, personally. Um, you know, in recent weeks, I have had uh, more opportunity, more minutes, something that I, um, you know, was just being patiently waiting for. And I feel as if I perform, you know, relatively well in, in, in the, that short spit of football that I played. So just looking forward to continue, continuing trying to improve and, and try and take this opportunity as, as, it, as it is. Yeah, and, and I would imagine as physically fit as I'm sure you keep yourself, it's not quite the same intensity. So has that actually, guess the, the gap between the games, has that sort of helped at all or has it found it difficult to get into that sort of rhythm that you get when you're playing week in, week out? I just think it's, it's difficult, um, just kind of the repetition of playing, the routine of, of, of being relied on, the routine of kind of knowing you're playing, things like that, that all plays a part in, um, I think, how you perform, opposed to when you kind of don't know and you kind of working your socks off, which is normal to train hard and obviously prepare for a game. But I think, um, I think for me, it's been, it's been difficult kind of knowing when that opportunity is going to come and, and just trying to stay positive for, for when it does come. But fitness-wise and physically, you can only do so much. Um, you know, you can't replicate a game, but... You know, I feel as if I've done as, as well as I can to keep myself as sharp and as fit and healthy. And when I've been called upon, is that you know that hasn't been something that's let me down. So yeah, yeah. And the manager has sort of singled you out on a number of occasions this season for for the sort of the attitude and, and the work that you've done behind the scenes, which you know you'll know it yourself. But it, it must be nice to hear that, that the professionalism you're showing is is you know reflected across the squad and, and the management. Yeah, definitely. So it is obviously, you know, I think he don't shy away from mentioning that. He tells me quite often and um, the feeling is reciprocated. I think he's been personally with me, obviously not being um, relatively happy with how much football I play. But as a person, how he's dealt with me, I, I can't, you know, I can't really say a negative thing about him. And he's just been po as positive as he can with me. Um, so when the opportunities did come, you know, I was, you know, mentally in the right place. And... Yeah, I'm an experienced lad. I've played the game long enough um, to know the highs and lows of football and how to deal with, you know, some setback and and um, you know some some periods in your in your football and career that aren't going exactly how you want. But stay positive and stay prepared. And and you know, like I said, an opportunity presented itself last week for me to get my first start in a while, and I was you know I was well and well and ready for it. And that experience that you you bring up there, it's a kind of double edged sword. Yes, you got you understand that these things do happen, but equally, while they're not going to pension you off just yet, you know you know that the number of years you've got left playing the game are, are going to be fewer than they are obviously a decade ago. Yeah, exactly. There's no, there's no doubt in that you know as a footballer you have an expiration date. Um, no one knows when that time will come. Thankfully, with me, um, I don't feel as if I've sh I've I've been given any. Um, insight on when that day will come for me. I still feel extremely fresh and confident and, and happy and joy being in, in, in a working environment. So long may that continue. Um, but yes, like you said, there is a, there is a time that, 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 that has to be an inevitable call. But for now, um, you know, I feel like as if I have a, a few very good years ahead of me. Yeah, no, I, I'm undoubtedly, I'm sure, hopefully we'll see lots more goals from you. And did you, it, it's difficult because if it's an injury, you know you're not playing for a while, but mm -hmm. was there a, anything you were able to do on the training ground over the last few months when you haven't been playing as much in the uh, the, the team that you you know, you can work on, you can improve your game, take something from somebody else, that kind of thing? Um, not necessarily being able to take that, because equally every week I, I can't really do... Um, extra gym or extra prep because equally um, the sports scientists have to be aware that I'm still got a part to play I'm still involved in the game so I can't risk if I do too much on a Friday worrying about long term a window or of opportunity might present itself on the Saturday it might come on that's happened a few times a season we have to be ready and things change quickly so it's difficult to prepare as if I'm far away because I've been very close to it i am just been that one player that's kind of been on the outlook um, or, or been looked as to be brought in. So I haven't really been able to use that time to, you know, 
put efforts in specific windows, but what I've done is just, um, I can look at the positive, it's just, it's, it's a very robust campaign. And I played a lot of football in my career. And personally, I don't think from a physical perspective that, you know, having had my last parts of the season off or not being playing, it can only do me good in the long run. That's the only positive that I can take from it. But I've just kept myself ready and worked hard and done as much extras as I can still aligned with our schedule. Uh, one man who has certainly been scoring goals this season is, is Andy Byman. He's having a, the best season of his career in terms of, of goals. He's one away from that sort of 20 mark. You just talk to me about psychologically how important it is to hit those kind of targets, the kind of things I'm sure you say to yourself at the start of pre-season. Yeah, for, like, like you said, for Andy, it's, it's, it's kind of... Um, we won't see it as a freakish season because we know what he's capable of um, um, and his importance to the squad not only his goals, but his experience and leadership and um, his desire. But he, you know, he's done fantastically well this season. He's, he's been our catalyst and he's allowed, I guess, the rest of the group to try and build off of. Um, for him, I'm pretty sure, having known him, he probably didn't have a target of 20 goals. You know, not really consider him as a, a natural goal scorer or somebody who thrives off just scoring but this season we've seen a different dynamic to him you know not only his goals is it's had a big impact in almost every goal that we we have scored or, or some part to play he's been fit available I think he's played the most minutes so it's so much positives to take from from this season that he's he, he's had this year um but I definitely think he's he's surprised himself in the goal mark um, and surprised a lot of people outside of this building, but we never had any doubts of, of, of the impact that he'll have if he's playing. So going into this weekend, obviously Peterborough is struggling at the wrong end of the table, look like they, they're going to be heading back to it to, to believe one, but do you approach a game like this any differently than you would you know, last weekend against Bournemouth? Not really, no. Obviously, there's obviously an expectation um, in playing uh, a team that's first or second in the league and playing a team that's, you know, um, near the bottom. But we know the difficulties of, difficulties of this league. Um, we, we look back through our fixtures, we've probably found it just as difficult as teams near the bottom as it has been when we've played the teams near the top. Um, every game is very difficult. Um, usually one goal decides our fixtures, so that's how it's been this season. So um, we prepare very well. Very tough session today in prep for that. Um, in, in large spaces, in difficult conditions, but we know what to expect. We know it's going to be a very tough game. The gaffer doesn't shy away from you know reiterating that we're, we're not taking our foot off the pedal, irrespective of what they have going on this season. We have our own ambitions, and we want to still try and move in that upward spiral, and, and that's just our approach and until um, the final kickoff against uh, Huddersfield. Absolutely. Go well on Saturday, Naki. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Okay. You, you, you've played in across all the leagues in, in, in England, from League Two to the Premier League, internationally, which is you know a remarkable achievement in itself. Is there anything else that you kind of want to achieve in the game before you do eventually hang up your boots? Which is kind of strange for me to say because you're only 31, you've still got years ahead of you left. But what what is it that you want to achieve before then? I'm just hungry to try and um, to try and. I guess have a have as as good of a career as possible. I mean, I you know I know I have so much more football to play. Um, I don't really, I you know I'm quite comfortable with how what I've done in my career up to this date. But I'm still ambitious. Like I said, I've I've had a crack at the Premier League. I one of my biggest regrets is not having scored a goal in the Premier League. Um, with you know limited opportunities when I when I spent that year and a bit at Burnley, in the Premier League. Um, um, and that was the ambition coming to this football club. Um, that was something that we thrived for. Obviously, a lot's going on in life. A lot has been hindered and we haven't really, you know, really hit those heights. But that's still the aim. I still want to have another crack at the Premier League. And obviously, I know in my position, the, probably the easiest way to get back is to get promotion. Um, you know, unless I can hit the heights that I had before, which a, a team would, you know, want to take me in and, and that opportunity presents itself but short-sighted is just trying to do as well as I can at this level do as well as I can while I'm contracted at this football club and enjoy it um, that's something that I, I 
I pride myself on is just enjoying it, being in this predicament, being a professional athlete. And it alluded to how Nigel Pearson has, has complimented your attitudes to the game when you've been out of the team. And a few weeks ago, you said when I, after I saw you playing the under twenty three fixture that you'd put yourself kind of forward to play. Was that kind of to build your own match fitness or kind of prove your worth or just to kind of simply play football again? Yeah, it's just just to try and take an opportunity to kind of keep myself at the level of which I believe I need to be at to perform and an opportunity present itself because I'm under no illusion that they've come, you know, they've come in sporadics. I uh, had a period where I got a four or five starts on the spin and then I haven't played since. So there's no guarantees of when the opportunities are going to come, but I just have to do everything I can to be right when they do come to try and, you know, and do as well as I can. I think anyone in my position will find it difficult to make huge impacts when... Um, opportunities have been so few and far between um, but yeah I put myself ahead for it it's a fixture why not um, it's an opportunity to you know you know get the mileage in my legs so if uh, you know opportunity presents itself I'm good for 90 minutes score a couple of goals is always good for your confidence and just play football you know I love I love playing it. I love I love every day being able to come in and, and, and work and, and do what I do for a living so um I, I put my ego aside and just do what's right for, for myself. Is, is there a player in the under 23 that kind of stands out for you above all the others that you think Buddy Ali is going to go well in the game? I think I think all the ones that I, I initially felt as if had uh, good careers ahead of them are pretty much a part of our squads at the minute. Um, Eamon, um, Belly, Tommy Conway, um, Alex Scott, now uh, Josh Owens is with us. Dylan Cadge has been training a lot. These are young lads that are you know eighteen, nineteen, and slot right into our sessions and 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 don't really look a foot off at that time. So they have a long career ahead of them. But um, this experience for them all is 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 valuable. I you know I wouldn't put my finger on just one of them, but all of those names are definitely um, young players that. I can see representing this club um, for, for a long time and for years to come. I know you spoke quite, quite openly and candidly about having, not getting your move in January when the offers came in. Was that kind of a disappointment for you at that time? Yeah, I mean, at the time I felt, um, you know, I think I've been honest about this. I think the gaffer spoke about it. Um, I love my, my time here at this football club. I love coming into work here. I love playing for the club. I love everything about it. I'm very settled, but ultimately I'm here to play football and here to do as well as I can. And if the opportunities are, are, are coming few and far between, then common logic says if an opportunity presents itself elsewhere to go and play, then that's the right thing to do. And that was just my approach. You know, I spoke with the gaffer uh, right at the end of the window. I had um, an opportunity or two to go and play football or, you know, to go out and learn, which I felt would be, you know, beneficial to my career at the time. And, you know, it just didn't transpire. You know, the gaffer wanted me to stay. He reassured me that I'll get opportunities. Um, and for quite some time, I, I didn't think that was going to happen. And then obviously Anton picked up a small niggle, which gave me an opportunity. So I just try and um, just try and stay as positive and present as I can to the end of the season. And do as well as I can if any opportunities present itself or not to them because that's all I can do as 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 a player um, and that's what I was brought in to do so I need to I need to do that. You must feel like you haven't really had a fair crack at the whip this season considering last season you were joint top scorer. Is that kind of how you felt this season? Um, yeah, I mean I'm under no illusion that the the players that have played in front of me thoroughly. Um, deserve to be playing. I don't think um, um, I'm not a hypocrite. I'm you know I'm not envious of anyone. I think Andy's been fantastic. I think he's had to fill in in many different places and deserve to play. Uh, Chris Martin has has been pivotal to us. He's been our main focal point and been um, been reliable um, for us. And it's been you know it's been he's been a catalyst for. Andy's performances and Antoine, who has come on leaps and bounds this season, and and as a player who is only going in that upward spiral, um, and performances, and they've all been fit. Um, Antoine's deserved his opportunities of late, so that leaves me kind of on the outskirts, having to 
bite my tongue, keep my head down, and just be a positive teammate and be ready when the opportunities come. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been difficult, of course. And finally, from me, do you think you'll still be at the football club in August, or do you have to kind of be realistic about the situation? Do I think I'll what? Be, be at the football club in August, or do you have to be realistic about the situation? Oh yeah, well, I'm got another year at this football club. Um, I haven't been told anything different to that. My main focus is to do as well as I can for Bristol City. Um, if things change, we know football goes. If this, things change and there's a change in the management's approach, then of course we you know we can look at different opportunities. But I love it here. I, I want to play. I'm still driven. I still love working with the manager. I had a chat with him today. He put a smile on my face. Just you know, telling me what I need to hear as a person. And and with that being said, all I can do is try and you know try and do better than what I've been you know been able to do so far and. If I get any opportunities, I need to make sure I take them. That's my approach. Sure. Thanks for your time, Lucky. Good luck. No worries. No worries. Hey, Lucky. Yeah, I hope you're well. Um, your spell in the under-23s, um, how beneficial would that have been? Because obviously you want to be a first-team player, but how beneficial would that an experience have been to the likes of Tommy Conway and Sam Bell, for example, that you can share their experience with that younger players? Yeah, I like to think. I think if you speak to any of the young lads... Um, um, not to brush my shirt off, but uh, I think they'd all have something positive to say in which I've been when I've, I've spent a lot of, you know, quite a lot of time with them, not just in the first team, but yeah, like you said, when I play a 23s fixture, so, we, you know, we've had to travel away, we've had to prepare while the first team's been training for games and we're playing some 23s threes games, but they're good kids, they're young talented individuals and I can still learn a lot from them you know it doesn't go it, it, it doesn't go just one way um you know football is forever evolving and they have so much talent so working with them will in my opinion will help me as well and yeah I'm here for any of them like I said I probably lived through what most of them will eventually go through in their football career to some extent I played at every level um and as an experienced player when I was young this that's what I would have liked players to be like, you know, a good person, a good role model, someone they can talk to, someone who's always got a smile on their face, and that's that's what I try to be, because that's, you know, that's how I, I approach life, really. Yeah, because yeah, of course, like, it's an experience for yourself, perhaps, um, you've scored for the end of 20 feet, but say, like, you can time your runs better, and then perhaps when a pass is played to you, um, and it goes to you, goes well or doesn't go well. You can give them that advice, can't you? And they'll learn from those experiences, whether it's positive or negative. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, and it bodes well for when we do come into the first team field and play together, because that's happened enough as well. It's just building relationships. It's just building connections, and they're going to keep making mistakes. But those mistakes will be a learning curve for them all. Um, you know, and 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 like I said, it's been been a pleasure to to play with them and, and work with them help coach them but also help learn off them and and yeah they they all have bright futures and then just just lastly as well is that a few times this season we've seen a few players like Andy play at right wing back or such you've been a striker all your career but if there's some opportunities with them kind of available is there any any other position that you feel that you could adapt to to be in the team for example or do you see your future solely as a striker at this point in your career yeah, I definitely definitely see myself solely as a striker. Um, um, I think that's what's got me to where I am today. I think, um, I think I have the physical attributes. I have the ability to fill in in other roles. But if I'm being brutally honest, that's that's not why I was brought into the football club. That's not why I played in the championship and and got a you know got an opportunity in the Premier League by filling in in other roles. My ability to score goals. Getting goal scoring positions is what's got me here. Whilst being here, I've for the first time ever played out of position quite a lot. Um, you know, I played off to the right and off the left, and that was just me being able to adapt. Obviously, through circumstance, we've had a lot of injuries, so I've had to fill in in different roles. And I think that's you know, you know, personally, I don't think that's had the biggest. Um, benefit to my, my my Bristol City career but I've had to do it and that's in my opinion that's how football is um you know Andy's done it a lot this season but still been very influential for us still been able to chip in with goals and yeah this season I've filled in at times out wide a lot um 
last season, uh, majority of the second half of the season, or just have the um, November, December, I played wide, and I did as well as I could do.